What's up, everybody? This is episode 12. And welcome back to another episode of Nord Shapoon and Ultimate Storm 4 Beginning to Master Tutorials. If you have never heard of this series before, it's just pretty much why I just choose one character out of the entire roster. I tell you guys everything I know about that single character. And today's character is going to be a hard one for me. Um, it is Tuyuya uh, of the Sound 4. And this character is one of the most complicated characters in the entire game. Um, just because she's a mixture of a puppet master, a normal character, and a long range character, you gotta know how to play her. So, there, I'm not no Tuyuya main, and I do know how to play her, but I'm not like a main. I don't know the, all these specifically advanced stuff, but I'm just telling you the stuff that is in general just good with her. Like what to use, what not to use, but it's gonna be up to you guys to, um, if you wanna get really good with this character, to find out for your own. Um, of what of what to do with this character that's really advanced because I don't know I don't know some of the really advanced stuff but I'm gonna just tell you what I know and how to at least to go with her by my standards because this is this this is just basic knowledge that um just, just general knowledge that Toyoya is that Toyoya does like what's the most damaging combo what combo you should not use what's her weakness and what she switched out because of a bad matchup. I can tell you all that right now in this video. So this is gonna be one complicated video for me, but I'm trying to break it down, uh, break it down bit by bit. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe for more beginning my tutorials. Uh, but without further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to mention about Toyoya is that uh, she's, as you can clearly see, if you have not seen Toyoya already, she's very different from most characters. So as you see right here for her uh, triggers down at the bottom left corner, you can see that she doesn't have items. She actually has like these sort of monsters. So these are the things you want to be, you're mainly going to be prioritizing most of all, these are your puppets. I was, I'm just gonna call them puppets because I really don't know what they are really. Monsters, puppets, who cares? Summoning. These are the summonings. That's the proper way to say it. So, each summoning has a different um, attack and um, has a different attack and um, different uses. Usage. So, we have the uh, Doki Doki Vine, we have the Doki Doki Club, and we have the Doki Claw. I don't know why I say Doki Doki. But yeah, these are her three summonings. So with this, you're gonna be using um, all of them specifically for different uses. So um, this, well, I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain once we get into it. But it's pretty much this is for mid range, this is for close range, and this is for both at the same time. So I'm. Ooh, it's gonna be hard to break this down. But let's just go bit by bit. Let's just start off small, and I'll gradually explain of what each thing does. So let's just start off. So let's start with her combo first. So here is her basic neutra combo. There we go, goes into a strike back, of course, of course, of course. And she doesn't have a down combo or an up combo. So, she also is a long range character. So here is her long range neutral combo. There we go. Here is her, once he heals up, here is her long range down combo. There we go. And here is her long range up combo. All right, and here is her air combo. A regular air combo, here is her, yeah, she doesn't have a long air combo, so yeah, it's just a shuriken. And here is also, I need to mention this also, here is also her sh um, shuriken, her cho um, chopper shuriken. This is gonna be very important. This is on the ground too. This can only be worked on the ground, right there. So, all right, before we even start the puppets, let's go over the long range stuff. So first, what I like to do with each long range character, I like to find out what connects up. So I want to explain to you guys what connects up. So usually with all long range characters, um, the um, their long combo don't connect up, which means that the opponent can just block in the middle of it. So let's see if any of these combos are um, connect up. Let's see if they connect up. I already know the answer because I already practiced this character. <laughs> So the neutral combo does not connect up. Let's go to the down combo. The down combo does not connect up. And the up combo does not connect up. So none of Tuyuya's 
long range combos connect up so that means that uh pretty much if you do a long range combo they can just block it and just dash through you and just counter attack you so yeah we're gonna talk about that in a second so pretty much with so pretty much with her basic attack it does no damage neither does her long range her um long range attacks do any damage as well like if you if you actually look at the down combo the down combo is probably the most um powerful combo let me turn the guard off for a second if you if you for some reason get this combo off the down long range down combo you're not doing a lot of damage as you can see right there you're not doing a lot of damage her long range combos don't do anything this is probably the worst thing about her i would say her long range combos because um first of all she stands there she can't move and you, like you literally just can't move you can't cancel it anyway they don't connect up they don't do a lot of damage and they're not fast so i'm kind of thinking that they suck and if you go full screen only first half of it connects up the rest if you go full screen like it does not connect up you go mid-range Go mid range right here, it does connect up, but it puts a little bit too close for the opponent because they can just counter attack you. So, yeah, if you're playing to Yuya, -Yu, she is not mainly a long range character because there's a lot more long range characters that can do th this crap just like she can, but more better. So, yeah, don't if you're playing to Yuya, -Yu, do not prioritize in her long range specialty because it's not a long range specialty. Now, let's go with the Doki, the Doki summoning. So, we got, let's start with Doki, Doki, Doki Claw. I keep saying Doki Doki twice. All right, so Doki Claw is pretty much your close range Doki. He follows you around and whenever you summon him, he summons right by your side and he will not move away. Now, he does do a three, uh, a three slash attack that goes pretty much distance, but he will come right back to you. So this guy, is gonna be your protector. This guy is, is is this guy is your is your bodyguard right here, and he's always gonna be there at close range. So you want this guy at close range because he attacks the fastest out of all the Doki um all, all the Doki summonings. Okay, he attacks yeah he attacks the fastest out of Doki summonings, and I do believe he does the second most damage out of the Doki summonings. And this is the only Doki thing that leads him to a strike back. So. Pretty much you want to use this summoning only for when they get close range. So like when they are about to hit you, use this summoning and then he'll attack because he's the fastest and has the most um, a power. And also that um, he also has an infinite combo in his combo. So uh, let me put the guard on right here. One, two, okay, you, you blocked immediately. So if I do this, well I guess it's not an infinite combo, but he does allow the... It does allow the opponent to have hit stun, a lot of hit stun after the second hit. So it's not an infinite combo, but you can combo up after that, so like this. There you go. So it's not to stun long enough, I would allow me to unsummon my Ducky um, Claw and just do my nature combo. So I just want to mention that this summon does have a lot of hit stun after the second hit right there because that means that you can use your open jutsu cancel you can switch another character you can switch another character and then do an ultimate jutsu so yeah there's a lot of stuff you can do like you, right at this point you can do a lot of stuff so let's move on to the doki club so the doki club is also your bodyguard except this time i mean it does the same properties this time he will follow you around just like the doki claw but this time he has a club and whenever you press the attack button he can just go away like he doesn't have to be close up to you but he has the option to chase the opponent down with his club and then do, go into a two hit attack which is which which is okay like it's okay i would say the doki claw is much better but this time um i do believe this has the biggest hitbox out of all the Doki summonings. So this one does the least amount of damage, but for his two um, his two hit attack, it pops him up for a pop up. So you can use like an ultimate juicy cancel right after for with another character. You could combo it um, up by dashing like that. So yeah, this this pretty much is for combo potential. No, it does not. You cannot switch to another Doki. And uh, I guess you could. Wait, hold on. I did do this once in practice. Now, let me try. Yeah, I guess you could. I guess you could do that. You could just switch up your Doki's um, mid match, but it's it, it's really hard to do that because you gotta be like right at like the right the second. You gotta be right up close to the opponent, and you really don't want to be in that position to do that. 
yeah, it's 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 kind of that's kind of that's kind of eh. But pretty much, um, uh, but pretty much this thing is the slowest, and it, yeah, it hits the slowest, and it's the least strongest. Is this is really the the Doki you're not gonna be using the most, just because it's slow. It does track the opponent, it does chase after the opponent, but it's gonna leave you out vulnerable for a long period of time, and. Yeah, they can just dash past it. So this is the Doki you're not going to be using the most. But I'm not saying it's terrible. I will I will base it down on the strategy you can use for each Doki once we get after it. Once we explain what each Doki do. So let's go to the last one, the Doki Bind. So this one has no arms, legs, and looks kind of creepy. This one is not your protector at all. This is the one that's going to be chasing the opponent down, hard tracking. And it's, this, is, this is your long range one, pretty much. So this one does not follow you. But if you press the attack button, it will chase the opponent into a attack if you keep pressing it, and it does the most damage out of all the Dokis. So yeah, so pretty much this is your mid to long range Doki. This is the one that um um you if, if you get if you get back, and you can just press the attack button, and he'll just keep attacking. They'll just keep attacking, regardless if they move or not. So let me get my controller up here. Let me where's my controller? Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. I should have it with me. Here we go. There we go. So I'm gonna press the attack button. I'm gonna move from side, from left to right, and this Doki's gonna chase me down. This is gonna show you how good the tracking is with this Doki. Look at that. He can still hit me. I'm just running to the left. Now, if I'm dodging, then that's a different story. And I believe this thing hits me while I'm in the air too. Yes, it does. So. That means that you're. This is this is pretty much your range you want to be at with this Doki. You want to be where they can't they can't dash at you, and you can still hit them with your Doki. And if you get the full attack off, it does the most damage out of all your Dokis. At least the most base damage, which is really good. It's really good. So, pretty much this is the yeah. Pretty much you want you want to summon this Doki at mid range or long range, and you want to just kind of spam it out. All right, so let's go on with the properties of each Doki. Now we discussed what each Doki can do. Let's go on with properties of each Doki. So each Doki has a hitbox, which makes it um, you can they can actually block hits for you. And and because it's not like a puppet, they actually don't like go down and they don't be, become an actor. They just block the hit for you. So for example, if I use the Tail Beast Bomb, I take no damage. He blocks it for me. And that's what I mean. So these things can actually block hits for you. These things can actually block chopper dashes, just like I did right there. Air dashes, like that. And they, and if you start hit them, they'll take their own like damage, but they won't go away. They'll just be stunned. So just like that. So that's a very unique property because I don't think any puppet can do that exactly. Like block a tail beast bomb without blocking. So your best thing with Tsuyuya is to whenever they get close or when they they get really close up to you it, your best bet is to try your best to hide behind your doki claw and your doki club because you want to be using these at mid to close range so you want to always try to hide behind your doki club and your doki um pretty much hide, always try to hide behind your dokis besides your doki bind because this is going to be the one attacking the most so you want to be hide behind doki claw whenever Naruto is this close and you want to be using this because that's it's close range Boom, and get them off you. Alright, second thing I want to mention. When you use your Dokis, not that. When you use your Dokis, it counts as an actual attack from a normal character. It does not count as a long range or a puppet attack. So, what I mean by that? What I mean by that is, um, like, you can actually jump cancel out of it. You can actually chop a dash out of it like that. Because you can't do that with long range characters like Kimi Mario. Like, I can't chop a dash after his long range combo. So that means this counts as a normal combo. So for example, I could do something like this. So like boom, air dash, combo right after and back up. So you can do something like that. Or um, what I would like to do most of all, I like to use the attack, then use your jutsu right after and it combos up and i will get to the jutsu later but you can cancel stuff after you use certain attacks so doki club jutsu doki club again you can do something like that or most of all you can cancel to your ultimate jutsu like that that's that's why that's why i would like to mention that the doki claw has a certain hit stun so you can cancel your ultimate jutsu 
And pretty much they all have hits done to cancel your ultimate jutsu. So this one is the first hit. Like that. Yeah, he looked clean. There we go. And the, and this one is just the first hit of of its, of its attack. Because it puts them in hits too much hits done that they can't move. Which makes it pretty good. It makes it a pretty good cancel. Pretty good cancel. It's kind of hard to get out of unless they sub. So, um, now we've discussed the properties. Now let's go into her other stuff, like her um, grab and her tilt. So, with this, her grab and her tilt are kind of meh. They're literally meh. <laughs> her, her grab is low to the ground, so it can't hit anything in the air. It's kind of short range. And it's not really that fast. So it's literally a meh. I'm not saying it's terrible, but it's just mess. So you can do something like this. I gotta get close. Wait, hold on. Let me get boom, boom. You can do something like that. Because your your puff is pushing the hits done for a little bit longer. See, we gotta be the perfect distance to do that. Scum! So pretty much she really doesn't have a grab cancel per se like I like to do with all characters because her attacks really don't do, it puts them in too much knockback so her regular combos don't do a lot of, um, it can't cancel too much knockback. Yeah, see it's too much knockback. So your best bet is to do it with a Doki. My, my suggestion is, my suggestion is to do it with the Doki Claw because it's the fastest. They come up to you and boom boom and then you can do after the second hit how I showed you boom boom if I can do it fast enough okay let me try that one more time okay I missed I missed the lead but you get the point though you get the point I'm not doing that again you get the point so pretty much yeah that's how you can get the grab off if you need to but I wouldn't say you should be aiming for it because it's Again, it's, it's, it's meh. It's, it's meh grab. <laughs> it's just meh. Alright, so let's go through her tilt now. So her tilt is just a burst of sound that goes in all directions, but it's actually not that big of a hitbox. Like, I expected to hit from this range, but it doesn't. You have to be, like, really close up to make this tilt hit. But if you do hit, it goes into a strike back. But it's, again, her tilt is meh because I expect it to be more longer range because, you know, she's sort of a long range character. But there's pretty much no other way to get this tilt off except by blocking with a chopper dash or you just try to use that mid range and use it as a switch out. So like this, so this juicy blocks chopper dashes as well. So like, let me see, like, let me see if I try to do it. Uh, at least I think it blocks chopper dashes. Uh, I can't. Can't do it both. Can do it both uh, controllers. Yeah, I can't do it both controllers. It's too. It's too fast. But I think it blocks at least air dashes. Probably not chakra dashes. But you pretty much got to use it whenever the opponent gets a little bit too close up. So if they're if they're like attacking your Doki Claw with um if you're attacking your Doki Claw with melee attacks, it's probably best for you to do your use your tilt to just pop them back off. Just pop them back off. That's pretty much the only way I can get this tilt off because you can't get it off any melee attacks. And if you use any of your Doki Dokis, um, you can't really cancel into the tilt because that's just a thing. Yeah, you can't cancel it to the tilt. So yeah, it's pretty much you want to use it as a safety tool. If they get a little bit too close, use it like an almighty push. Just, just boop them right back. Just boop them right back. If they hit your chocolate dash, just boop them. Just like that. Alright, so I think I'm forgetting one more property of the Dokis. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, another thing you can also do with the Dokis, um, as you see, she you still have guard break kills. As you can see. Uh, okay, I, I switched them. Okay. Thank you, Mask Man. Thank you. So, I, I, you have guard break kills. So, because all Dokis have his gun, you can actually just use that his gun to, um, cancel to your guard break kills. So with the Doki Claw, you can do this. Just like that. Doki Club, you can do the first two hits. Or I think just the first hit actually. Just like that. Or you can do Doki Bind. 
and do like fast. So because they all have their e each individual cancel. So yeah, do like that. And also, um, this is just a little short thing to mention. It's not really big, but whenever you go into a cutscene, like a grab cutscene, the Doki cancel. The Doki goes away. So like that goes to like a straight back. If I go into a straight back, the Doki goes away. That, and that's pretty much every single strike back. So if I go, the Doki Claw goes to a strike back, he's gone. You gotta resummon him again because he's just gonna go away. So yeah, I just wanna mention that. So like for example, if I go into a growl, my Dokis are going away. Just like that. These little claws. Man, I love this growl. They really did a good, a good like animation on the growl. So before we go into his jutsu, um, her jutsu, I'm sorry, I did not mean to call you, he, take you, yeah. But, um, let's talk about her chakra shuriken, because this is also going to be important. So, if you use a chakra shuriken on the ground, she throws out, a, like, a super sound bullet type thing, and it actually puts the opponent, again, in hit stun. So you can use this to extend your combo. So if you use the Doki Claw, and they're at close range, one, two... Chakra bullet. One, two, chakra bullet. One, two, chakra bullet. And it puts them in this infinite loop, which you can just keep looping up. So the reason why I say do this with Doki Claw because he does the most damage. Because if you use the Doki Bind, his first hit really doesn't do that much damage. Same with the Doki Club. Plus the Doki Club's first attack is, is really slow. So I would say just use it with the Doki Claw only. But one, two. One, two. And you gotta keep up that loop. But look how much damage I did with just like two loops. So you can literally just use this as an infinite combo. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So if you get a three of these, I think you should be able to get a three of these for a full on punish. So like if they're if they're just wasted their subs and everything, and you do this combo. Oh my okay. You do this combo, you can actually just keep doing this three times and get off 50% damage, which is a lot. And it ended off, okay, no, don't come back to me. One, two. One, two. One more time. One, two, three. There we go. 50% damage. That's three times. Woohoo. All right, so I think that's about it. Like, the second shooting game is pretty strong. Okay, yeah. So now let's go on into her jutsu. So her jutsu. I think it's one of the best for stopping the opponent because it's sort of the jutsu is sort of relate related to like Hinata's um air palm bullet thing in the air because her juice that juice is really good but this juice is also similar to that where she throws out three sound notes that home in on the opponents and if they get hit by one they're stunned and his stun they can't move so that's why this is one of the most dangerous supports to get hit by because if you get hit by it, you can literally just get combos. And there's three of them, so if you sub too early, you're gonna get hit by the other ones. And yeah, so it's it's pretty bad. Like it's 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 a pretty bad support. I mean by bad I mean good. It's a pretty good support. So um I would say use this for Astro Astro Yuya, use this as a protection tool um if you know the opponent is going to sub. So for example, if you use the Doki Bind and you're at this range, you can use the Doki Bind, they're gonna sub. You can literally, after the first hit, cancel into the, the Beam Flip. Cancel to the Floating Up so they can't go anywhere. And if they try to um, sub and Chakra Dash past the Doki Bind, they're gonna get hit by the Flutes. They're gonna get hit by the Flutes. So yeah, I would say use it to cancel into some of your Doki Dokis. You can use it to cancel any hit of your Dokis. And it's very smooth with it too. It's not like rugged it where you gotta, um, you gotta freaking do it um, preemptively. You can just cancel it smoothly. First two hits. First two hits. That's how smooth it is. First two hits. Yeah, but the overall the Juicy Region does do that much damage. It's just, it's just a hit stun that helps you out a little bit. There we go. So yeah, just kind of cancel it with your other stuff, and cancel your other stuff, and 
Um, it's just to bait out a sub, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so let's say if the opponent has four subs and you know he's gonna sub, like you know it in your brain, set up. Because there's no reason why you shouldn't set up besides just like a wasted chopper. How much chopper is this up, by the way? I mean, um, let me just see. Takes sub uh, probably about one third. Yeah, probably one. Uh, yeah, probably about one third of your chopper bar. And yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Probably like this one third, but you're going to use you're going to use it twice in one whole setting without charging. So one, two, set up. You got set up. Boom, boom. Can't move. Nice. Look at that. But using it as support, it is also really good. You can just use it right behind you. Go into a chopper dash, and you got floaty notes behind you. So if they sub, they're going to get hit by um, his stuff. Just like that. You can even use to sting your combo. Just like how I did right there. Boom. Look at that crap. That, that is... This is a really good support. I'm not sure this is probably like top 5, but it's probably like top 10, honestly. This is a really good support. Wait, can I use the... Okay, let me try to sting my combo. If, if, freaking, if freaking Toby don't stop pushing it with his freaking elbow... Okay, yeah, but you did, you did, you saw it before, you saw it before. Um, let's go into, wait, did I cover everything? I think I covered everything, right? Yeah, hope I covered everything. We're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna review all this at the end of the episode, because I think I missed, like, one thing <laughs> about her duckies, but I hope it comes back to me once, um, once I, uh, remember it. So, let's go with her, um, old Jitsu Cancel, so... Pretty much, um, she doesn't have an ultimate juice to cancel as, as her um, generic attack. Even as a strike back, it doesn't work because, um, well, let me just show you. It's too slow. Like, the startup is too slow, so like, she can't connect up. So, the only way you're connecting up an ultimate jutsu is with your dokis. You're just with your dokis. So, um, the ultimate juice cancel with the, with the doki, um, claw. Let me put this right here. You know you lying. There you go. Um, let's just get with the Doki Claw. It's the first to get One, two, boom, just like that. And this is a really cool looking Jutsu. It's really pretty looking. This is one. I think to Yuya and probably Kido Maru was one of my favorites in the Sound Four art. It was it was really good. Um, the Doki Club actually has two Ultimate Jutsu cancels. One is the first hit, just like that, where he just spins around and you get hit by it, just like that. Hey, look, right. And the second one is the um, just the second hit because it bounces up into a pop up, and they this also just you tracks hard. Look at that. So if you so like if you want a more reliable Fujitsu cancel, you can just go with the Ducky Club and hit the first two hits. So yeah, this is just a little more reliable. And the last one is the Doki Bind. Um, just, just the first hit, just like that. Yeah, but you gotta be like really close up. Let me see, let me try one more time. Is that it? I got you. Boom, so it's, it's really just the first hit. All right, so. Which, okay, so I'm just gonna pick and choose of which one I think is worthy of you canceling. So, the Doki Claw is probably the best for canceling with the Ultimate Jutsu um, cancel. Just because uh, if you get too close, first two slashes, it's very easy, no chance of missing, pretty much. It's 100% accuracy. Doki Club, um, it's probably like a 90 or 95% accuracy. Just because the Doki Claw is pro his first hit is probably slow, but even if you get past that, like the first hit, it's an instant cancel. It's instant cancel regardless if you hit the second hit or not. You just gotta go pretty fast. Doki Bind is probably like a 50 50 because Doki Bind has all of his hits got connected up and you gotta be close up to the opponent. So it's literally just a 50 50. Let me try, let me try in at this range. Yeah, is it? Or let's, let, me, let me do it like preemptively. Let me try to do it. Try to do it like that. Yeah, no. Uh, let, me, let me try it. Boom! Come on. If this doesn't work, yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, yeah. 
So yeah, I would say don't use the Ultimate Juice to cancel with the Doki Vine, just just because it's kind of unreliable. So we we did uh, we did all of her stuff. Now let's go on to her Ultimate Juice, um, her Awakening. So her Awakening, she summons three little ghosts and they follow her, and she becomes pretty much a normal character, not no puppet master, just a normal character. And so we're gonna go through all her stuff. So here's her generic combo. There we go. And I'll also like to mention that she has a special effect where she sucks out the chocolate with each attack. So the more attacks, the more chocolate, the more, the more chocolate she sucks out. And here is her air attack. There we go. Here is her tilt. And here is her growl. Boom. Alright. And I think our right, jutsu is Demon Flute, Phantom Wave, Evil Melanie. Oh, that looks so cool. Which that drains a lot of chakra now that I'm actually looking at it. Wow. He's a lot of chakra. So, is, did I miss anything? Hold on, miss anything. No, but I think I got everything. So, pretty much, her playstyle is completely changed into a normal character. Pretty much, you want to be um, on the opponent at all times. I'm just going to turn this off. So, um, pretty much, uh, you just want to be on the opponent at all times. And also, before I even get to the combos, um, her tilt and her grab apply status to flex. So, like, um, her, it could be speed down, like I just got right there. It could be defense down, poison. Um, I don't think it gives you attacks. I don't think it gives you like a buff or anything like that. But yeah, I would say get the grab off if you're gonna get anything off, just because um, the um, the tilt applies one stats effect. So it could like one speed, one de um, defense down, but the the grab applies two at the same time. Oh, it, oh, it doesn't. I thought it applies two. Maybe sometimes it applies two. Yes. Yeah, right there, because they just apply poison and defense down. So try to get the grab off as much as you can, because this really helps out. Like if you can get all speed down, poison and defense up, you're gonna be set for life. Like actually, you're gonna be set. So try to get the grab off as um, much as you can, and then once you do, once you do get the grab off, try to get your jutsu off. So this is gonna be your punishing jutsu with this awakening. So. Pretty much it's just one, two, then cancel with your jutsu. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. She doesn't have too much to deal with. You just pretty much apply a stats like with your grab and then try to get the uh try to get the um um what's it called? Phantom Phantom Flu off. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it because she really doesn't dish a lot of them for awakening. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say awaken with Tayuya because she doesn't have the best one, but it's like if you have to, it's okay. Like this is her most damaging combo, and otherwise she's gonna grab off. You be eating alive! Wow, that is 50 with the defense down. Wow, that is a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. But yeah, let's go into uh, let's review her stuff. Because I really don't want to mess up these Dokus because the Dokus are most important. So let's review. Um, to you, it's not a long range character, but she does have long range properties. But most of all, she is a mid range character who can control her puppets. So um, let's me review the Dokus first. So the Doki Bind, you want to be using at mid to long range because in just spamming the A button and letting it run and just letting it run free. And you want to be using like your supports to protect you because I know that. Once the Doki Bind gets on the opponent, the opponent is going to come at you with everything he has or she has. He's gonna be he's gonna be coming at you, dashing at you. When he does dash at you, you wanna instantly cancel into your Doki Claw. Because your Doki Claw is something that's right next to you and he's your protector. So uh, once he dashes, summon your Doki Claw and get behind him. And then counterattack with your with your Doki Claw. So I have a rule, if any of the Dokis are getting hit, you want to instantly summon them out and summon them for something else. Um, yeah, so like for example, let me put the computer back on like that. Let me give you an example. So let's say Naruto dashes in and he is hitting my Doki, um, my Doki Claw. You want to free, you want to, um, 
back out and use your Doki and switch to another Doki immediately and do that because um, if you switch, that means that Narc is going to be hitting nothing while you will be, um, while you'll be summoning another Doki and doing a counter attack. Just like that. So, um, pretty much only for close range, use the Doki Claw and the Doki Club. So, if the Doki Claw is getting hit, summon the Club. If the Doki Club is getting hit, some Doki Claw. Never summon the Doki Bind at close range because his is it, it, really unreliable. It's really unreliable and it's it's like a 50% chance of hitting, honestly, because it's tracking. It's good, but it's not that good. Alright, so yeah, pretty much if one's getting hit, switch to another. Remember, you can always hide behind your big Doki, like Doki Club and Doki Claw to block projectiles, so if there's a Sasuke um, spamming on Inferno style fireball jutsus in the sky, just hide behind, hide behind your Doki and you'll be fine. I remember all, remember the all I taught you to do with the Dokis, because you can do something like this, and then cancel with the ultimate juice like that. Just like that. There we go. So. Um, I'm not, no, with the long range attacks, I'm not saying never use long range attacks. Like, they're just really bad with Toyo, but I'm not saying never. If you are going to use long range attacks, I would say use it while you're doing the Doki Bind. Like this. To keep him at bay. But I really don't think that's that good. So let's say you get a Doki Bind off attack, you probably use a few um, sound waves just to put him at bay. And then use another Doki Bind. Uh, yeah, it's it's really not good with Toyo. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna say it's really just not good with Toyo at all. The um, long range sound effects, just because they're su they're just bad. They're super slow. They're and they don't connect up. They're, they don't do any damage. Like I really don't see the point in using this, especially if you can't cancel it. They don't do anything. But yeah, pretty much with with Toyo, she's probably one of the hardest just because she has to focus on her puppets. And she has to multitask pretty much. But if you, are, but let's say you are getting hit, like you're getting hit with Toyoya, and then you can't get them to back off, then just switch your character because there's nothing wrong with switching your character once you get hit. There's nothing wrong with that because she, because she, she's awesome supporter and she can be an awesome damage dealer. But she just very skillful. But switch your, switch your support, switch the pain, switch the mass man, anybody, you know what that can help you out. And switch, and switch back to Toyoya. When you think you got yourself back and you, and you can you're far enough to do um some damage but i think that's about it i think i taught you everything i know with Toyuya. now it's on your part to practice this character and find out some stuff that even i don't know because i i don't know everything about this character but yeah i think that's about it jeez it's been like half half an hour oh boy <laughs> i've been talking for this character way too long but thank you guys for watching this episode to Yuya. Pretty much one of the hardest characters in this game. My name is Dylan12. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys uh, next time.